Hello Europe! It's soon time to go to Turin for the big party. But first, I'm gonna meet up with my Eurovision angel Jens and we are gonna find out who will win Eurovision Song Contest according to you guys. Follow me! My name is Krista. For many years I have been trying to find the answer to the question. What makes the Eurovision Song Contest such a special phenomenon? I thought I would crack the code when I participated myself in 2013, but I still want to know all about its magic. So this year my road to Eurovision continues. On the road to Turin I want to discover the fascinating stories behind the Eurovision Song Contest. Welcome to Krista's Road to Eurovision! Yes, my Eurovision So you are staying at fancy hotels. Oh yes, my God, who is paying for this? I was just meeting with some friends. But of course you but were. You're welcome too. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about our favorite subject, Eurovision Song Contest. I thought you were saying boys, but okay, that's yes, my, my other favorite subject. Eurovision comes first. Eurovision comes uh, first. So what, what is your opinion about this year? Is it a strong year? Um, is it a strong year? I feel that it's um, a lot of ballads. Um, there's not a lot of differences between the songs. It all feels flat, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, there are some countries that stands out for me. Um, for example, Spain is one of those countries that has a really good bop. Uh, but I think most countries looked at the Netherlands um, they realized we shouldn't copy uh, the winner of last year, what mostly the trend is, like copy the winner of last year, but I think most countries thought, well, let's see what the year before that won and do that. So um, I, I'm more in a party mood every time I go to Eurovision mm -hmm. and I love to see a good party song win, except when it's a very, very good ballad. But this year it's... It's difficult. I mean, the, the last good ballad that I can remember, um, besides Arcade, of course, but it was Molitwa. That was like... Oh, that's really long time ago. That's that was back in Helsinki. Yes, yes, yeah. 2007. Um, that was immediately a ballad of what I thought this should win, or it is a crime. Yeah, well, what about Conchita then? Did you like that ballad? Um, well, I, I was more impressed by Conchita mm -hmm. as a person and the statement that she or he made um, at Eurovision. Uh, the song was okay, it was like a, a decent song, but for example, the Netherlands could have won it as well. Mm, if, yeah, they if, also had a really well, good they had song. A really, so it was not an obvious winner for me, um, ballad-wise. Mm. And I have the same feeling this year, where like 80% of the songs are ballads. But do you think it can also be because now we've gone through two years of like Corona, everybody's a little bit depressed, we are mm -hmm. writing ballads, do you think that can be a thing then? Could be, what, could be. Yeah. I don't know why uh, countries or delegations chose for one song or not. Um, it, it could be that we feel depressed and that we feel the need to, to write more depressing songs. But that's why I want more party songs, because that's, that's what I of need Of course, the and that, for example, is why I love Ukraine so much. Mm. Yeah, um, it sticks out, it's, it's unique. It sticks out, and I'm, I'm shouting for years uh, for a rap song to win Eurovision. If you, you see what the winners are already, we had a rock song, we had already a good ballad with Arcade, we got a hashtag Me Too song with Neta, um, anti-bullying song with Mon Samalov. I mean, all these different kind of songs, um, but I'm missing in the list of winners a rap song. I love rap, um, but I know that Eurovision doesn't love rap, but this is an ethnic good rap song. Um, and with a nice melody also, nice I think it's unique. And also Europe want to show their sympathy now for Ukraine, so now actually now a rap song could actually win your Yeah, yeah, it would be great. Besides that as well, and that, that's just me personally, but I, I feel like um, this may be a downer, but um, war is going on. People get killed at this moment. So it, for me personally, it feels like a little bit weird to celebrate a contest mm -hmm. for something that is, let's, let's face it, not that important. What's the best song? 
really. We can we can talk yeah. about this until we're eighty, but um, I think showing support uh, for peace and um, for a country that really needs our support right now is important than the contest itself. So I would say if Ukraine wins, that would be a victory for me and for mankind and for peace in general, I think. So that's why Ukraine is my, my favorite. It's a good thing that Europe shows support to Ukraine because the whole Eurovision Song Contest started after the Second World War exactly. to, to bring peace, you know, to have some like love, happiness and music and bring Europe together. Exactly, so exactly. So in that way, like the circle would be closed. Yeah, and we can have next year as uh, hopefully the, the war okay, will so. be done and we have a good contest with party songs and, yeah. uh, and stuff like that. But um, yeah, for me, for me, Ukraine is the clear winner if you ask me. So let's sum it up. Your top three is? <laughs> uh, my top three, uh, eight points go to Italy, uh, my 10 points go to Estonia, and the 12 points go to Ukraine. Yeah. You can you can relate to that? Tell me your, I, I, tell me your I top three. I can relate to it, of course, but I don't uh, have exactly the same favorites as you. No. Um, I would give my eight points to the Netherlands, actually. And this is interesting because this song has grown on me so much the first time I thought, okay, beautiful song, but now something has happened. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I understand Dutch now and, you know. The lyrics are the beautiful. The lyrics are beautiful. The lyrics are beautiful. Uh, I think that she is really interesting artist. She's something. She's something. She, has, she something. has something. She's really interesting. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. And I think people will sing along to that hook. And I think there's a, a fantastic vibe in the song. Mm -hmm. I think it's really beautiful. And my 10 points go to Slow Mo Oh. Oh, to Spain because this is like this is the party song of the year I love it I think it's a great pop song and I think she's super sexy and the dancers and the dance moves I think I think the number is gonna look super cool on stage and she is like luckily she is not she's performing this year and not the year before because the year before we had a lot of these kind of dance mm -hmm. songs and these kind of numbers but no she's really alone with this so she sticks yeah. out I think it's gonna be a great year for Spain and my 12 points Don't say it. go to... Don't say it. Sweden. Oh. I'm sorry, Jens, but it really goes to Sweden because I love oh. this song. I think it's so beautiful. I think Cornelia is also unique. Uh, I love the sound and it's something with the song. It's just like the melody, it moves me. I also think the lyrics are beautiful. I, I'm not into breakups at the moment. I'm like, okay, so it's not the theme, but it's really, the song is just beautiful. Um, I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I know that you don't get it, but I love it. Okay, yes, I feel that we really need an opinion from a true expert. <laughs> so it's time to call Alon Amir. Hello, Hello Alon! Alon! How are you? Hello, beautiful people. It's great here in Tel Aviv. How are you? We're fine, thank you. We're so curious about your new book. Tell us a little about it. Uh, it is what it is, being translated into English now. Uh, it's based and inspired by my many years of Eurovision and it's taking place in Stockholm and it's what's happening when things aren't doing really great, when you're representing your country with not a song that you like and the singer is not great. So it's about choices, how to make choices and it is what it is. But I, I am super curious now to hear your top three and also tell us why you love these songs or oh, why do you think they're going to win. And maybe do it this way, like eight points go to, yeah, let's ten do it points like that. go to, you know. No, of course not, of course not. That's the Eurovision way, so hit it. So eight points from Israel go to Norway. Oh. Ooh, someone like bananas. Someone you're into bananas. Yeah, it, it's a really fun song and I really do like my bananas, so why not? It's a great song. It's, it's just a great pop song. Ten points, and now it's getting weird for me. Go to Croatia. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm the only one really loving this song. I don't know, it just does something for me. It's, uh, it's just great. It brings out so many emotions for me and, and she's a wonderful singer. Uh, so Croatia, well done. 12 points, not really surprising there. And 12 points go to Svalia. Ooh, also my favorite. Okay, Krista, okay. It's 
Two against one, clearly. We have really good taste in music, <laughs> me and Alon. No, but I have to admit, I did some research, so I went on the street asking experts, Eurovision experts, about what they think. And I must admit, maybe Sweden came up once or twice. When it comes to sex, I like three tops. When it comes to Eurovision, I like top threes. So let's ask some random people in the street if they can give me one or the other. The eight points go to Albania. I really like that song. Ten points go to Italy. And 12 points go to a certain wolf and a banana. I just love that song. It's amazing. They put on a massive performance on Eurovision in concert. I hope they can do that at Eurovision as well. I think the audience will love them because of their enthusiasm. My eight points go to uh, Austria, my 10 points go to Romania and my 12 points go to the Netherlands. It may sound like a depressing song, uh, but I think because we're Belgian, I think we understand the lyrics and um, Dutch songs are pretty in at the moment. Yeah, I like it. My eight points go to Australia, my 10 points go to Poland and my 12 points will go to Winner Factory Sweden. I do have like the feeling I can't sit still on this song. It's a song about breakup and I'm only like, hold me closer. Like, oh, it's such a beautiful song. This one will win for sure. Eight points would go to Germany. Well, I'm, I'm from Berlin, so <laughs> I have to uh, have a little bit of home, home run there. Uh, my 10 points is going to Portugal. I think we need that song at the moment. And 12 points goes to France. Yeah, it, 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 it has it all and uh, it also has the message behind it that uh, minority languages or minority in, in that sense can make their way to the top in Eurovision and I, I think that's always a beautiful message. My eight points, they will go to Poland. Uh, my ten points, I'm going to give them to Spain. And finally, my twelve points and my winner for this year is going to be Sweden. It's a complete act. I love the raw, strong voice of Cornelia. I love the way they perform on stage. It's simple, but it's modern. Uh, it focuses completely on her and on the message of her song, the heartbreak. You can really feel it when she sings it. Uh, eight points I will give to Spain, so in my personal opinion. Then my 10 points will go to Albania. And then my 12 points will go to France, so that's my favorite song. Although, uh, in my opinion, Chanel should win because Spain deserves a trophy. Because when you could, uh, could deliver us um, Chanel with Slow Mo, Rigobertos, Ay Mama, and Tanguera Estera in one year, we just bow down, we give you the trophy, and go party because you deserve it. That's it. Eight, eight points go to Greece, ten points go to Sweden, twelve points go to Austria. Austria is a very catchy song, I don't know, but it's very. Uh, Enrique, unique, very happy, danceable song. It's a good song, I, I think, for Europe. Eight points go to Malta, ten points go to Switzerland, and my 12 points go to Serbia. I really adore the song um, in Corpore Sano. It's, it's so artistic. Uh, she looks great, she has a great body, although, uh, well, she, she deserves the points for, for this wonderful intelligent song and the video clip is also so beautiful my eight points go to ukraine 10 points definitely finally for united kingdom and my 12 points my 12 points go to italy uh, italy this year really truly amazing performance and i'm sure that in the grand finale they will offer us something really different and with lots of special effects hopefully my eight points go to poland my 10 points go to Belgium and my 12 points go to the United Kingdom. It has beautiful melody, the, the chorus is very catchy and he has a, an amazing voice and on top of that the, the guy comes across as so gentle, friendly, everyone will like him. My 8 points go to the Netherlands, my 10 points go to Ukraine and the 12 points go to Shivering and Brividi, Italy. It's an amazing song, it's very touching, the boys are cute and uh, Italy, the land of Sambuca and Pizza. <laughs> well, I gave my 8 points. 
points to the Netherlands. 10 points go to Lithuania. I really like this song. And my 12 points, and I really love this one, is Iceland. I really like the Icelandic language. It's like a magical language from a fairy tale. Um, I don't really already met the sisters in Amsterdam, and they're really lovely. So I'm gonna vote for them in the final, maybe in the semi-final. I don't remember, but um, yeah, 12 points go to Iceland. My eight points go to Moldova this year. Then my 10 points go to Norway, and my 12 points go to the United Kingdom. I feel like they deserve it after all this time, but also Spaceman is such a wonderful song, and I love Sam Ryder, and I love his energy, his positivity, and. I just really hope they take the win because it would mean a lot to so many people and to me as well. Okay, my eight points go to Norway because it's so entertaining. My ten points go to Spain because she just nails it every time I see her performing it and it's unique in its genre at Eurovision. And my twelve points, yeah, Italy. It's art, I really like the song. I think professional jury will absolutely vote for it. And I'm sure the, 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 the viewers at home also will love the song. So my winner is Italy for the second time. I'm Remco Reisdijk, I'm 56 years old. I work for the Dutch Railways Company as a, a um, all-round serviceman which means I give information, travel information, and I help people on the station with everything they need. My best Eurovision experience was in 1986 with uh, a bunch of friends. Uh, we did uh, a ghost experience. Uh, we talked to a ghost and we asked the ghost what's gonna happen with Frizzle Sizzle? Because we were completely mad crazy about Frizzle Sizzle, big fans. And the ghost told us they go, they're gonna be on the sixth place. But actually the ghost was completely wrong because they ended up, I think, on the 13th place. So yeah, that was too bad. Uh, that's in the past and I would love to go on holiday with Stephanie from Monaco. Uh, that would be a great experience. Uh, I, I really loved her song. I don't know exactly the title of the song, but it goes like this. Na 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 Italy as a country, I have great memories. I went many times on a holiday, on cycling holiday and ski holiday. So I love I loved Italy a lot. My favorite Eurovision memory is of Ticin in 1975. They won. And yeah, it was one of the first time I look at the television of a Eurovision contest. So this is, yeah, grabbed into my heart. Um, I've heard from the media that Italy has got a, a great song. So Italy might have a, a great chance. My favorite Eurovision song is Ne Partez Pas Sans Moi from Celine Dion. This is really uh, outspoken of a heart and I really like it. Ne partez pas sans moi, donnez-moi la chance. That's really great. Well, I've seen the performance of Steen of the Netherlands and it's, it's a lovely ballad, it's, it's really good. So I think she might have a great chance to win. Okay, it's very clear, you and Alain discussed it before. Yeah, no doubt we about that. We just have a really good taste in mm -hmm, music. Mm -hmm. But let's see, I got a brother from another mother, GJ, with his Eurovision news, and I'm sure he will back me up on this. <laughs> Hey Jens! Hey Krista, good to see you guys again. I am so sorry I couldn't join you guys today, but I have to catch up on the latest Eurovision news for my Eurovision podcast, Dingadong, and of course for you guys at OutTV. 
So I can't be there today because, oh my God, there is so much happening. We are only one week away before we get to our semifinals and finale of Eurovision 2022. And there's drama. Did you hear that the major screen in the middle of the stage called the sun with eight moving arches is no longer moving, which means that over half of this year's artists have to change what they had planned for Eurovision for the stage. Oh my God, it's drama. And we hear that some contestants even have to change their choreography because they think it's too sexy. Ooh la la. On the other hand, someone is riding a mechanical bull. I hear stuff about a lot of fireworks, so it is definitely going to be a great and dramatic show there in Turin. But that's not what you called me for. You called me for my points and to settle something, I hear. Well, let me tell you, Sweden did not make my top three. But on the other hand, guys, isn't this fun? Isn't this why we have Eurovision? Because nobody agrees on what song is the best and therefore it will be exciting all the way until the end. Otherwise, we would have known in March who won and I, that, that's not that exciting, is it? But here are my points for this year. Now, eight points go to a country where we may not have expected them to land this year. It's a country that got zero points last year, but this year went for a different approach and it is working. Not only did they bring a super catchy song, they also brought an entertainer who can sing, who's got 12 million followers on TikTok, and I met him at Eurovision in concert and he is the most charming, loving and enthusiastic positive guy you'll ever meet in your life and his song is also amazing of course it's the song spaceman by sam Ryder. wow that dude can really sing my 10 points go to the Netherlands. They are continuing what we used to call the Dutch decade, but it's going on longer now, where they are sending their own artistic songs with a passion, with a vibe, and where the artist is trusted to send their message all the way across Europe. Now this year they're doing it with Steen den Hollander. You might know her as S10, where she sends a song called The Diepte. <laughs> I have a weakness for the big pop divas giving me that choreo, that booty hypnotic, that everything, that slayage, everything. And this woman brings it all. After winning Benidorm Fest, the first time in years where Spain did a national final where she slayed, I have to give my 12 points to Chanel. Very excited where you guys end up with the points. Keep doing your thing. I love both of you and I will see you very, very soon in Turin. Bye. Here are the results of the jury vote of our TV. One point goes to Portugal. Two points to Iceland. Three points to France. Four points to Germany. Five points to Austria. Six points to Ukraine. Seven points to the Netherlands. 8 points to Sweden, 10 points to Italy, and 12 points go to... Spain! Arriba! Mo, 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 mo. <laughs> and here are the results of the public vote from our TV. One point goes to... Belgium! Two points go to... Poland. Three points go to Germany. Four points go to Albania. Five points go to the Netherlands. Six points go to the United Kingdom. Seven points go to Sweden. Eight points go to Ukraine. Ten points go to Italy. And finally, all 12 points, or your 12 points, go to... Spain! Arriba! El viva España! See you in Spain next year! Now it's time to take a look at the final top three. Take it away, Jens! Okay, at third place, Sweden. Congratulations, Krista. Thank you. At second place, Italy. Rivoli. And the winner is of the Our Music Awards 2022. Spain! Slow-mo, mo, mo, mo. mo, mo.
Booty hypnotic, give me more. I love this song. I'm really happy with this result. Yes, me too. I have to say. It's a good winner. Yeah, congratulations to Chanel and to Spain. But we also want to show our support to Ukraine this year. That's why we are going to give an extra award to Kalush Orchestra. That was it for today. And next time we will see you in Turin. Yay! Oh my god, yes, we're going to Turin! Yes, we're gonna tour in Turin! Yay! See you next time! Mwah.